The comma is arguably the most misunderstood punctuation mark in the English language. Believe it or not, you can't just drop a comma into a sentence at a point you believe there is a pause. It is meant to clarify writing, yet many are puzzled by when and how to use it. This is understandable considering how many possible ways it can be utilized. In this video, we will look at basic comma usage including joining clauses, introductory phrases, appositives, listing items, and coordinate adjectives. Keep in mind that certain comma rules and usages are not addressed in this video, and that exceptions exist for almost every rule in the English language. Before we get into the comma talk, it is essential that you are familiar with the grammatical unit known as a clause. A clause is different from a sentence in that there can be multiple clauses within one sentence. A clause is a group of words that consists of a subject and a predicate, also known as an action. For example, Beatrice loves birds is a clause, with Beatrice being the subject and loves birds being the predicate. This also is considered an independent clause because it makes sense on its own. There are also dependent clauses which contain a subject and a predicate but cannot be understood by themselves. For example, because she has a pet parrot is a dependent clause. She is the subject, and has a pet parrot is the predicate, but it does not make sense alone. Who is she, and where does this because come from? Multiple clauses can be used together to create a sentence. If we combine our independent and dependent clauses, we have a complete sentence. These clauses are joined by the word because, which is a conjunction. Conjunctions are used to connect clauses. In certain cases, a comma must be used when combining clauses. A comma is not necessary in our first example because of the conjunction. However, if the dependent clause is first, a comma is needed. Commas can also be used to combine two independent clauses. Let's say you want to express that Beatrice loves birds, but also that she works at a huge pet store. We could have two separate sentences, but since they are related, we can combine them. To connect these independent clauses, we need a comma and a different kind of conjunction, called a coordinating conjunction. Aside from combining clauses, commas are useful when adding additional information to an otherwise grammatically correct sentence. Let's start with this simple sentence. My grandfather bakes bread. This is acceptable, but more information can be given to make the sentence more complex. A comma can be used to add an introductory phrase to the sentence to clarify when he bakes bread. You can add every weekend to the beginning as long as a comma is included. Introductory phrases are very useful for clarifying when, where, or how something occurs. Introductory adverbs have the same rule, such as beginning your sentence with surprisingly. What if you also want to include the name of your grandfather to make sure the reader knows who he is? You can use an appositive, which is a noun or noun phrase that clarifies a noun immediately next to it. Right after grandfather, include his name, but surround it in commas. Commas must always surround an appositive. Commas must also be used when listing three or more items within a sentence. If you want to explain that your grandfather bakes white, rye, and whole wheat bread, you would include a comma after the first and second item in the series up until the conjunction, which is AND in this case. This comma, right before the conjunction, is considered the Oxford comma and technically is optional, although not using it can confuse your readers. Coordinate adjectives refer to adjectives that appear one after the other and modify the same noun. For example, 
you could explain that Beatrice has a loud, colorful parrot. A comma is needed between these two adjectives to clarify that they modify the same noun, parrot.